morning, class. Uh, we're going to be having our first discussion uh, on uh, Hinduism in general, and in particular, the uh, topic of Vedanta. The text we'll be using is uh, the Karmadi and Brink text, called Waste Center, and we're going to be looking at the particular section labeled Vedanta in the uh, sixth edition, which is going to be on pages uh, 102 and 103. Now, introduction to uh, world religion textbooks uh, do not assume prior knowledge uh, in, in the subject, but at the same time, certain passages can be challenging. And so I've chosen a particularly, uh, what I, I would consider a challenging passage, and we're going to uh, examine it critically, and I'm going to show you um, a few suggestions on how to read the passage. I will be reading the passage in this particular uh, video, but before I do this, it's only a few paragraphs, so it won't take long. Uh, but I think it's a rather challenging uh, uh, passage. Um, so the first thing I did is, I, uh, and the first thing you should do is when you read the passage, is underline or circle or write down any word you might not be particularly clear on. This comes somewhat later in the chapter, so they've already defined many uh, essential vocabulary um, words to the uh, religion of Hinduism in, in particular and to the Dharmic religions in general. But this passage has quite a, a, a few vocabulary words, so I wrote down a few of them that I thought you um, may or may not know. Uh, if you do know, that's great. If you don't know, uh, try to look back in the chapter. If you still don't know, uh, write me a message on, on a Canvas or email. So just some of the words in the passage that, that um, one should know. Uh, Brahman, Monist, Upanishads, Brahman, Atman, uh, Middle Stages of Life Cycle, actually you should know the uh, entire life cycle, uh, Yoga, Vedas, Hermeneutics, Prime Mover, Mystic, um, Maya, and Vedanta. So that's essential that you uh, know what those words mean um, before fully comprehending the passage. I have one question for discussion, and I have three questions I've written down that uh, would help you to, uh, to answer that, that one uh, question. Um, there will be the actual discussion question. Now let me go ahead and read the passage. And um, if you're watching the video, you can follow along. You have the, uh, I've provided the text. Um, so it says, uh, it's titled Vedanta, and uh, it begins, um, Shankara, the greatest of the Vedanta thinkers, was a Brahmin, was a Brahmin who lived about 788 to 820 CE. He taught a strict uh, monist doctrine. That's the first word. Uh, what does monist mean? Reality is non-dual, and all variety and change should be attributed to illusion. What exactly is meant by illusion? Vedanta may be said to have systematized and deepened the teachings of the mona, um, monistic Upanishads, uh, taking their equation of Brahma, Brahman, and Atman uh, to its logical consequence. Shankara urged celibacy and skipping the two middle stages of the life cycle so that one could pursue uh, liberation wholeheartedly. He tried to systematize the Upanishads in terms of unqualified non-dualism. In other words, he tried to explain the basic Upanishadic concepts of Brahman and Atman with consistency and vigor and rigor. To do this, Shankara first established that there are two kinds of knowledge, higher and lower. Lower knowledge is under the limitations of the intellect, uh, while higher knowledge is free of such limitations. The limitations of the intellect include its reasoning, character, 
its dependence on the senses, and its dependence on the body to act. These limitations are all subjective, since they are the limitations of the knower or subject. The objective limitations to knowledge due to aspects of the known thing are space, time, change, and cause and effect relationships. Because of objective's limitations, we tend not to see or grasp reality itself. Higher knowledge comes by a direct perception that is free of either subjective or objective limitations. In practice, it is the direct vision of that the seers who produce the Vedas enjoyed. So again, what are the Vedas? Um, quite likely, therefore, Shankara assumed that the Vedanta philosophers practice a yoga that, like that of the ancient sages. If so, he assumed that the Vedanta philosophers experienced the removal of the veil between the self and Brahman, with which the self is actually identified. Shankara then applied this theory of higher and lower knowledge to hermeneutics, the study of textual interpretation. According to Shankara, all passages in the Upanishads that treat Brahman as one derive from higher knowledge. All references to Brahman um, as many or dual derive from lower knowledge. We can paraphrase this by saying that Brahman in itself is one and beyond all limitations, while Brahman for us, as we perceive it through sensation and reasoning, appear to be multiple, uh, to be both in the world and beyond it, both material and prime mover. It goes on. With the subtlety of a great philosopher, Shankar wo 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 <laughs> wove, um, like we wove the two edges of Brahman in itself and Brahman for us into a seamless whole. With the religious hunger of a mystic, he sought to correlate the within and the without. Shankara's core affirmation in his philosophical construction was that reality within is identical with reality without. Atman is Brahman. In other words, when one realizes through revelation or higher knowledge that there is no change, no space, uh, time limitations, no cause and effect qualifications to the real, one then discovers that there is no self. Rather, there is only the self, capital. The romantic uh, reality that one directly perceives to be the ground of both internal and external being. From the perspective of lower knowledge, there is, of course, a personal, separate, changing self. And at, in absolute terms, though, there is one indivisible reality that is both subjective and objective, that is Atman-Brahman. Since we rarely perceive directly we often live and move in Maya, illusion. The world of Maya is not unreal in the sense that there are no elephants in it to break your foot if you get in the way of a circus parade. The elephant in the world of Maya are substantial. Their dung is mighty and their steps will crush your foot. But this viewpoint has limited value. From a higher viewpoint, all that is going on is Brahman's illusion. Brahman imagining he is you, and Brahma imagining that he is the elephant stepping on your foot. And that's where this section ends. So the one uh, question for discussion that I want to pose after we, we look at all the vocabulary and go through it systematically is, what does the phrase Atman is Brahman mean? For Shankara, so so this is this is the uh, the question from from that just that particular reading, 
that we want to try to answer. And I thought before we answer that, don't just don't just paraphrase another sentence in the text, but we want to sort of look for for additional meaning. Um, try to answer three questions in the process of answering that question. And, and so, so the answering of that question should also, in a sense, answer these three questions, which are also uh, answered in the text, or in, in, in some sense also they're explained, uh, but, but uh, they can also have, have further explanation. So the first question is, what is the difference between higher and lower knowledge, according to Shankara? <laughs> So, so what's what's the difference between that? Uh, what is the difference between the subject, um, subjective and objective limitations to knowledge, according to Shankar? Um, what does the removal of the veil between the self and Brahman mean? And what is the difference between Brahman in itself and Brahman for us? So, so answer those four questions or have an answer to them. And then once you have those answers, then answer the, uh, the discussion question, which is, um, what does the phrase Atman is Brahman uh, mean uh, for Shankar? Um, so I'm going to post this on the discussion board. If you have any questions about any of the vocabulary within this passage, any vocabulary I didn't mention that you don't know what it means, um, you can either write me an email or, um, or post it on the Canvas discussion board. I'm going to be looking at all your comments and, and uh, making comments on, on those, uh, those comments. And, um, and uh, hopefully this helps in, in the reading of, of the, uh, the introductory to uh, World Religion textbooks. Look forward to talking soon.